Dr. Chaudhry, at the uh, Ret Retina World Congress, you presented a talk on the uh, uh, wild field imaging in OCT. Could you outline your presentation for us? Sure. So uh, this is an exciting area on, in retinal imaging and in ophthalmology in general. You know, for the last several decades, we've spent a lot of time focusing on the macula, looking at OCT of the macula. We've moved from time domain to spectral domain and are small, slowly moving to swept source. And in the same time span, in the last few years, we've had this aha moment with ultra-wide field imaging, particularly with optos imaging and looking at the periphery. And we've never really gotten the hybrid where we're able to look at the periphery using OCT. So the genesis of today's uh, paper that I presented was actually based on a, another article that I did a year ago where we looked at spectral domain OCT of the re peripheral retina. So this new study was a study looking at 31 eyes using a swept source device. Uh, and basically these patients had a variety of conditions from macro holes, uh, retinal vein occlusion, wet macular degeneration, myopic schesis, a lot of macular conditions and with vitreous, uh, vitreous issues. And basically we, what we did was we used a technique where we used the internal fixation light and navigated the patients out to the periphery to see how far we could get them to image. And as a result, we were able to uh, produce our results. So in all the patients, we were able to get wide field imaging beyond the posterior pole. The average field of view that we were able to capture was about 130 degrees field of view, the highest being about 170 degrees field of view. And that's without moving the patient or without moving the actual physical machine. So we were able to see beautiful images of the peripheral retina and eyes with myopic schesis, macro holes, seeing flaps of retina with vitreous attached all the way out to the equator. And all of this allowed us to see not only the vitreous, the retinal anatomy, as well as the choroidal anatomy in all of these patients. So effectively, this was a proof of concept study to see, can this be done? And if it can be done, how far can we achieve? And finally, really, what sort of detail and utility are we able to capture from this information? So what does this mean in the future for diagnosis of, of retinal disease? So really what it does is I think it opens the door for us to say what is the utility for wide field OCT in retinal medicine and it ranges from being able to look at pathological lesions, tumors, tufts, holes, lattice degeneration, possible tears to looking at conditions that affect the choroid. For example, pachychoroid disease, which we know affects the macula, there's an impact in the periphery. Are we aware of it? We haven't looked yet. Looking at diabetic retinopathy, seeing the extent to which the retinal ischemia affects the retinal thickness. So thinning of the retina in the periphery using OCT is something also we have not been able to see before. So it's going to expand our understanding of the pathophysiology of disease, as well as the interplay between systemic disease and retinal disease. So this is, this is going to open a brand, a different perspective for a retina specialist in dealing with their, their patients. I would hope so. And I think ultimately, you know, we've, we've been focused on the macular for a long time. It's the highest real estate, you know, part of the eye for the most part from the retinal person's perspective. But uh, looking at the periphery and its impact and interplay in this way is something that we've not been able to do, but we're going to start to be able to do that. So what's your take home message to retina specialists in, in relation to all the new technology? So my take home message really would be is to experiment with your OCT machine, see how far you can image patients, don't be shy to work with your photographer or technician to help teach them and navigate them and guide them to look at the peripheral retina. If you're looking for something specific, it can in most cases be achieved. And in our case, for example, the average field of view we got was 130 degrees. That's well beyond what we would consider a wide field.